Aquatics. I know. I threw in this completely off-the-wall lecture on ecology, and I'll tell you why. Because I'm an ecologist, and because I, when I learned this, I learned this uh, material in graduate school, and I just found it some of the most fascinating ecology around. And it integrates the knowledge that we have of the properties of water. Primarily that water is uh, less dense when it's frozen than it is when it's in liquid form. So, all right, let's think, what are the most important things from this lecture on aquatics? Um, I think the most important thing I want you to understand is how a lake goes through its cycle. I'm particularly interested in these diamictic lakes, which are the ones that are found up here in the temperate zone at our, at our latitude. And there are lakes that freeze in the wintertime. They don't freeze solid. Fish can survive underneath the ice. They thaw in the spring. They heat up in the summer. And then uh, they get cool again when fall comes along. So here's the, the gist of it, okay? Uh, it goes back to um, the idea that heat rises in general. Hot air rises, we know that. And hot water tends to rise, we know that. Um, not at all temperatures, though. So let's take a look. In the summertime, if you let a long, still day occur in, say, June or July, a lake will stratify. And a stratification means that there are two different temperatures of water in the lake the warm waters at the top and the cool waters at the bottom. A property of water is that although it has, we've mentioned before that it has a high specific heat, what it does not do well is transfer heat. So if the water doesn't mix between the two layers, the heat itself does not actually transfer through the water. It has to mix for the heat to be transferred. So for this reason, the water at the top is nice and warm. When you jump into a lake, it feels all good and warm in August. But your feet down there at the bottom hit the cold stuff. And it can be 10, 15 degrees colder down there. And so that is a stratified lake. Heavy cold water at the bottom, warm, light water at the top. When the lake begins to cool in the fall, what happens is that the bottom of the lake stays at the same temperature. The surface of the lake drops in temperature, drops in temperature, drops in temperature, until it's close to the temperature of the bottom. When that happens, the entire lake can turn. We call it turning because it, it then it, it mixes quite easily because the two layers now have about the same density. During the summer, they were not mixing because the light water mixed with the light water and the heavy water mixed with the heavy water at the bottom. Okay. Now, when it does this mix, what happens is nutrients, as you'll read in the notes, um, from the bottom of the lake are then cycled back to the surface. And as a result, there's often an algal bloom that occurs in the fall and the lake turns bright green. When it gets colder and colder and colder now, as the water temperature approaches 4 degrees Celsius in the lake, a very interesting thing happens, and that is that when the water gets to 4 degrees and goes to 3 degrees and 2 degrees, now the colder it gets, the lighter it gets. So if you try to freeze an entire lake, you can drop the temperature of that lake down all the way to 4 degrees, and then at that point, the water starts getting lighter if it's colder. So any cold water, usually that stuff on the surface, really cold, it stays on the top. And then it stays on the top and then eventually freezes on the surface, leaving the heavy, relatively warm, 4 degree water at the bottom. I think that's pretty amazing. This is the reason why lakes don't freeze solid. It's if uh, Anyway, so let's move to the melting of that lake. And at that time, it actually is stratified in the winter. It's stratified because it has cold water at the top and it has warm water at the bottom. If you want to call it 4 degrees warm, I wouldn't swim in it. So when the springtime comes along then, the lake begins to thaw and the surface water uh, thaws out. The ice melts and when it warms up the surface, then the entire lake turns 4 degrees. And when the entire lake is 4 degrees and a light breeze comes along, then the entire lake can mix yet again. So at this time, you can also have the recycling of all those nutrients off of the bottom again and being brought to the surface of the water where you may have an algal bloom in the spring. Now the lake, the entire lake will continue to warm and continue to warm and mix until you get a long still hot day in the early summer. A long and still because the wind is what causes the lake to do this mixing. 
right? So if there's not a lot of wind and there's a lot of heat, the upper layer can heat up and stay light on the surface. And when it does, it's resistant to mixing with the layers below it. And so it just keeps getting thicker and warmer and floating on the surface of that cold water. And we return back to the summer status. Now, I did not include all the information in this clip, but I tried to give you an overview so that if you were to tell your kid sister or your parents or someone when you're on a hike, you'd be able to explain to them why it is that uh, algal blooms occur in the fall and the spring, why that lake turns bright green when the, when the, when the trees turn just in time for great pictures. Um, that's why I think it's pretty neat. There are some more facts in your text about density and, and about nutrients, though. So not your text, but my lectures. So please do take a look at those. And uh, uh, there you go. If you've got any questions, give me a call.